Hello, I'm Dr. Harper. This video is a business forecasting quiz Excel tutorial. So let's bring up the uh, quiz. Uh, and this is for summer 2021, but this may be a different uh, uh, semester, a different course. Uh, however, uh, it's going to be the same type of problem, just the numbers may be different. Okay, the first question here, I just have statements, comes right out of the right out of the um, the lecture. And so I won't go over the qualitative things, but I'll go over the quantitative problems. So question two, I talk about a moving average. Again, question two, the quantitative I'll cover in this video uh, using Excel. So this video is partially solving these forecasting problems, but also a tutorial for Excel. Okay, uh, consider the annual time series, years one, two, three, four, five, uh, and here's a time series. What's the forecast for year six using a moving average with a window of four? Okay, let's bring up Excel. So the first thing we want to do is uh, take a, highlight this, Control C to copy, come to Excel, and here I'll say Control V to paste. And there it is. So let's enlarge this. Now, once it's in Excel, uh, I have my own way of doing it, uh, just to be safe, to be careful. It's more work, but it's safer. Control C, I copy this, right click, and I paste the actual values to make sure I have the values. Control C again, down here, right click, and I transpose it. Because a lot of the functions in Excel require a vector, a column vector instead of a row vector. Escape. Now I want a moving average with a window of four. Now remember, I want the forecast for time period six. And so right here, I will one, two, three, four. So the average of four values will be the forecast for the next time period, which is time year, year number five. So let's let's left justify this. And let's say equal average, open parenthesis, and the previous four values. Left click and drag one, two, three, four. And notice it's C7, is C7 is the uh, column and row. And the colon means continu uh, uh, continuous between C10, column C, row 10, in parenthesis, return, and we have the forecast now for uh, uh, for time period five. I want time period time period six. So if I click the cell and notice this is a a a solid a, a, a thick plus. If I come to the lower right, it becomes a smaller dark plus. Left click and drag it. It'll copy it down. And so the answer is six. And so right there, uh, the answer is six. So I've already given you that answer. Uh, I'm not going to do this every time because I don't want to steal your thunder. But I did it the first time to show you how to do it. Okay. Uh, question three is going to be qualitative. I'll let you answer that from the uh, lecture. Uh, question four is using simple linear regression. And so let's highlight this. Control C to copy. Go to Excel. Let's come down to here. Uh, and say control V to paste. Oh, one thing I didn't do up here. Uh, you can highlight this, come up here to insert, come over to charts and click the uh, scatter chart right there and you'll have a graph and then you can start formatting it any way you want. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Uh, question four, which is going to be regression for week 15. Okay, so now we have a weekly time series. So when you have weeks. Okay, let's come back to Excel here. Here's our weeks right here. Again, I like to highlight this, Control C, right click, paste the values. Down here, right click and transpose the values and then right click to make sure we have values. Okay, now I want the forecast here using regression. Okay, with regression, it's going to equal the intercept. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's, again, let's left justify this. 
so we can see what's going on. Okay, e equals the intercept, I-N-T-E-R-C-E-P-T, -E open parenthesis, and Excel sees that word as a function. And down here it says the known y's. Well, the known y's are these right here. Left click and drag all 12 of them. Comma, and then it goes to the known x's. Well, it's weeks 1 through 12. And then in parentheses. And so you can see here it color codes. The blue is the first one, which is the y's. The red is the second, which is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the x's, the weeks, the time, uh, the independent variable. And so, and it's C19 through 30, B19 through 30, C19 through 30, B19 through 30. We got, we got it. Good to go. But this is just the intercept. We want to add the slope. So we say slope. Again, the known y's, comma, the known x's. And so we had the very same thing, in parentheses, times the actual week. Well, the week is going to be that right there. Okay, now we're going to copy this down all the way to 15, but um, but we want the uh, the week to vary, but we don't want the uh, intercept and slope to vary because we already have all of it. So we're going to come back here and highlight, and then F4 dollar sign in front of the column and row will freeze it, will fix it. Same with the slope, F4. Uh, uh, for uh, to freeze it. Now when I return, where there's our forecast, and now I can center this. And now, again, I will click the cell, come in the lower right-hand side, and just copy this thing down, all the way down. And there's our forecast. However, notice we want the forecast for week 15. Okay, so if you come up here, Come over here and I say week 13. Notice what happens. Yeah, it will know that you want the 13, so it'll automatically copy it down for you. 14, it automatically copies it down. If I type 15 here, it'll give you the answer. That's your answer. Don't want to steal your thunder. I'll let you do that. Okay. Now let's go on to uh, question number six. Again, question five is qualitative from the lecture. Question number six. Now, question number six says, uh, let's see, oh, seasonal index approach. Okay, so let's take this here, control C and copy it, and then let's bring Excel back, uh, come down here, and down here, oh, uh, let me come back again. I didn't do it again. If I want to plot this thing, I can take this, again, insert, Scatter plot, and there's there's our uh, there's our chart. Then come down here with the uh, seasonal indexes. I copy this, and there it is. Uh, Control C to copy. Right click numbers down here. Right click transpose. Now I have column. Uh, actually, let me back up here. I want to delete this. Alt E D will delete all the, the the rows or columns that you highlight. But now for this one, it's going to be a quarterly time series. I want to block it. So this is a little bit different because it's a seasonal index approach for quarter eleven. I'm going to block this thing. So instead of creating a column, let's go ahead and create blocking. So this is quarterly for four quarters as a year. I'll bring five down here. Okay, and this is a quarter. Control C and then Control V to paste. And this is uh, quarters five, six, seven, and eight. And down here, I'll paste it again. Uh, and this is going to be the forecast. But this is quarters nine, 10, 11, and 12. But really, we want quarter 11. Well, when you're using a seasonal index approach, I'm assuming a stationary time series. And so since uh, uh, we have a stationary time series, we'll say equal the average of the first quarter, comma, the fifth quarter, because we blocked it, return. So that's the forecast for time for quarter nine. I can copy this over 
for quarter 10. I copy it again for quarter 11. I'll let you do that. Okay. Now, if we want to plot this, but we want to plot the, the, uh, the years differently, well, what I can do here is take this. Actually, let's come back down here. Let me show you how we'll do this. We'll take this, Control C it again, come here, and we're going to plot it this time. Okay. Uh, Control V, Control C, and then uh, the uh, values down here, transpose it. Boom, there it is. Okay, now we know we want one, two, three, four. Okay, that's the first year. So we insert over here and we plot one, two, three, four. And fine, there it is. I'll just make it a little bigger than that. Let's see here. Bring it down here, bring it over here. Okay, there's one, two, three, four. Uh, but then we want five, six, seven, and eight. So you click uh, the, the chart, and up here under the chart design, you have switch, uh, select the data. And down here, you have add another series. The series of X values will be five, six, seven, and eight. And the Y values here will be the Y values. Then when I say OK, and now I say, okay, now I have the first year and the second year. You can see it's relatively stationary. And then if I want to format these and get change the colors, you double click that. It opens up over here and you can change the color. You can change the, uh, the, uh, the series options, the primary axis here, secondary axis. Uh, or if you click the whole chart, uh, you can uh, change the actual size values. Uh, you can change the color uh, on and on and on. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's how you would plot that. Okay. Seven, eight. Uh, oh, now we have exponential smoothing. Okay. This is okay. So now let's highlight this exponential smoothing with a smoothing parameter of 0.4, which alpha is 0.4. Let's control C this, bring back Excel, uh, control V to paste this. Whoops. Let's do this again. I lost it. Here we go. Control C, bring back Excel, and then paste it. Whoops. Control V. Let me bring it up here so we can see it. Control V. Uh, control C, make sure we paste the values. Uh, and then down here, let's paste the transpose and make sure we get the values again, just to be safe. Okay, now let's center this. Okay, now then, I want exponential smoothing with a parameter of 0.4. Because that's, that's what I'm asking for here. Uh, 0.4, alpha is 0.4 smoothing constant and if we want exponential smoothing for time period uh, time period 16 I'll only do it for for 15 though I'll let you do the 16 down here okay um, well again this is the way I like to do things I like to have uh, 0.4 is my uh, alpha equals 1 minus 0.4 is going to be my 1 minus alpha and I just want to see everything uh, calculated to see exactly what's happening. So I can see what's happening. I have more control over everything. So now let's get the forecast. Well, for the second time period, second month, that equals the time series in the first. That's how we get started. Now for the third month, that's equal. That's going to equal your alpha times your time series plus one minus alpha times your forecast. And that's why I have the alpha and one minus alpha there. I can see exactly what I'm calculating. So here's blue times red plus purple times green. Looks good to me. Return. Now I can start copying this down all the way down. And if I went this, if I said 16 here, 
uh, copy this down to 16, boom, that's your answer. But you can also take this right here and plot it. Insert graph. Yeah, it's going to plot both of them. Uh, and so then what we're going to be doing here, watch what we do here. Let's bring this back down. Uh, let's bring it back up. Um, Okay, I think you can see that okay. Notice it's kind of tight in here where series one is the actual time series and series two, the, the orange, is going to be the forecasts because um, this is 42 and 41. 41 is a forecast, 42 is a time series. But let's let's come down here. Let's uh, only, let's look at the, uh, the Y values here. Let's go from 40 to 50 maybe. Double click this. And over here on the uh, options here, access options, the minimum is 40. Let's go 40 to 50. Uh, oop, I've list, lost some of it. So let's make this 30. Uh, well, I want to list 38. <laughs> okay, we're getting there. 38. Okay, well, I can see what's going on now. See? I can see pretty much what's going on. I, I keep doing that. I don't want to do that. Okay. What I do want to do, though, is what if I change alpha here? What if I change this to, say, 0.4, let's say 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. When this gets smaller, notice it stabilizes the forecasts. When it stabilizes the forecast, as the alpha gets smaller, then that's noise dampening. What if it goes the other way? 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. It does it automatically. Uh, well, as alpha increases, that's more uh, impulse response, enhanced impulse response. So you can actually see exactly uh, the characteristics of exponential smoothing, which is similar to moving average just by changing one parameter. And I talked about it in the video, I mean in the lecture. Okay, I talked about that in the lecture. Okay, uh, let's come back to the um, homework. Uh, question 9 uh, is qualitative. Question 10 is qualitative. Okay, well, so there we have uh, just an example of uh, a tutorial using Excel just to solve those quiz problems. And uh, that's how we get started in this uh, forecasting. The homework goes deeper and the memo goes into communications and that goes even deeper. And so this is just to help for business forecasting. So uh, I like Excel. Because Excel, you have more control. You can see you can do a lot of things with it. And it does more than one thing. One, it just solves a problem for you. Two, you have more control. But three, because of the control, you can have so much fun <laughs> with messing around with the data to see what's going on. You get used to the data. And uh, Excel allows you and the data to come together and uh, to become friends. So that's a tutorial. That's all I have. Uh, between now and the next time I see you, I want to urge everyone to be safe and take care.